Hey, what's up guys, it's Roy here. So today I have the Google Pixel 7a here in front of you. It just hit my doorstep. So in this video, let's do an unboxing and first impressions. Like all my unboxing videos, I wanna share the true experience of that initial impression with you. So I have not broken the seals yet. I bought this unlocked through Amazon for $499. As you can tell, I went with the charcoal color, but you also have the sea color, snow, and coral, which is a Google Store exclusive. But you know me, I like the darker color phones, so let's jump right into it. So let's go ahead and break the seals here. Got one, two, and uh, just one thing I wanna point out is this box is super tiny, like very, very, very small. But let's go ahead and get this bad boy out. So let's go ahead and boom. So let's put that to the side there. There is the phone, but let's put that to the side as well. And let's see what comes inside the actual box. So it looks like we do get a USB-C to USB-C charging cable, which is pretty standard with phones these days. We also get that uh, USB type C to USB A dongle. So if you wanted to do like some transfer between, you know, smartphones, uh, I rarely use this cause I always do everything through like the Google backup. And then looks like we have a SIM card ejector tool here. And then it looks like maybe some paperwork. Yeah, so just the Google kind of standard paperwork. So nothing too crazy there, unfortunately. No charging brick, but the phone is $499. So what do you expect? All right, so there is the actual phone, but let's flip it over because we do have this on here which does show you, obviously you got your SIM card tray on this side and then your volume up and down power button, charging and then our fingerprint. But let's peel this up. There we go. And there is the phone. So as we're talking about it, let me go ahead and turn it on. Let's see if there's any juice in here, which it looks like there is. But just first impressions initially, it's a light phone, even though I think I saw something online where it said it was like around 190 something grams. Uh, it does feel light. Uh, it's not super heavy by any means. Another thing I've noticed just right out of the bat is it does feel wide, if that makes sense right here. Um, it doesn't, I don't know, it just has this really like kind of satisfying, like really flat front screen. So it kind of curves a little bit and then boom, just ends with that flat edge there. The back is uh, this really nice charcoal color. Hopefully the camera is doing it justice here, but we do have that very similar color to the Pixel 7. We have the Google G there and then a darker visor there, which is housing the dual lenses. We got our flash there and then color matching here at the top. But one thing is, is that it is kind of a matted black color, which is uh, it's kind of like a space grayish kind of titanium gray color but yeah but looks good uh it doesn't kind of bleed over um super clean like the pixel 7 either so there's like a little stopping point instead of it just kind of being completely clean which is okay uh i mean obviously it's a a series phone which is supposed to be kind of a watered down version of its big brother which in this case would be the pixel 7 but in reality i think it's still um, okay, I, I you know I expect an A series Pixel phone to cut some corners, but with it increasing in price to $499 this year and kind of going this upward trend like it's been doing since the Pixel 3a, you kind of have to just understand that. Looking here on the sides here, looks like we have one, two, three antenna bands here. We have our power button here and our volume up and down button here on this side. And then flipping it over to the bottom, looks like we do have one antenna band here, and then our speakers and then our USB-C charging port. On this side, we just have our SIM card ejector tray there. Same thing, got some uh, you know antenna bands, one, two, three there. And then at the top, we have two more antenna bands and then a hole punch for the microphone up top. Now looking at the front, we are going to be getting a 6.1 inch OLED display here. Yes, there are going to be a little bit bigger bezels here, but that's okay. I do not mind that at all. I'm going to go ahead and go through the process real quick and get this hooked up and set up to my Wi-Fi, and I'll jump right back into the video. Okay, so got the phone set up here. It's still doing everything in the background, as you can see here. But one thing I wanna point out is if you do get this device, you do need to go into settings 
to actually change your actual um, display to the smooth automatic 90 hertz. So for some reason out of the box, it comes set at 60 hertz, but you just need to turn smooth display on. And now we have those buttery smooth animations. I also do go into the developer options and change the actual screen um, animations to 0.5 instead of one. That gives you a little bit more snappiness. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but I might actually do like a quick YouTube short about that. Maybe comment down below if you wanna see something like that. But talking about the screen, like I ended with just a minute ago, is this is a 6.1 inch OLED display. So as you can see here, now that I actually have it on, you can see those bezels are a little bit thicker than what we probably would wanna see. I'm okay with the thicker bezels because at the end of the day, guys, it is a smaller device. It's 6.1 inches, which is great. So even if I didn't have the swipe down notifications, I could still inch my finger up and swipe down. So I do appreciate the smaller fun size with this, even though it's not a small phone by any means, but it is a little bit more enjoyable to use versus the Pixel 7 that I owned. So just something to point out if you like a little bit smaller screen. And then looking here at the top, we do have a hole punch camera up there. Now that is housing a 13 megapixel camera, which is actually capable of recording 4K finally, which is awesome. Um, a lot of uh, flagship phones don't even record 4K on the front camera. So that is something I'm looking forward to with my full review to test out and kind of report back to y'all. It's very impressive that this 7A has 4K capabilities on the front. All right, so now talking about cameras, let's flip it around and talk about the back here. So we have two cameras back here. We have a 64 megapixel wide angle and a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. Now these are gonna be new sensors, so to be determined how well they do, but all the videos I've seen on YouTube so far seems like they do well. So the 64 megapixel camera actually pixel bends down to 13 megapixels. So you're still gonna be getting some great crisp photos, but it's gonna drop down to a more manageable file size. So very interested in testing the capabilities of the camera out. And you also can record up to 4K 60 frames per second with the camera. So something else that we get with this is an in-display fingerprint scanner. So this is not an ultrasonic, so it's not a high end. It's an optical fingerprint scanner, which uses light. And as you can see there, it's actually not that bad. It's pretty snappy. So if I do both my fingers, I mean, as you can see there, I mean, it's very, very responsive. And then as you can see as well, if I turn off the screen, you can see the uh, camera kind of glowing there and it's because it has face unlock. So if I do that, it's unlocked and I can actually go in and change it where I don't have to swipe if I want to, but it does give you an added bonus to be able to unlock your phone with your face or with your fingerprint. Something to point out too about this phone is it does have a 4,300 milliamp battery. So to be determined with my testing, how well the screen on time is and everything with this phone, since it does have a higher refresh rate this year, I do see that this is probably not gonna be the battery champ like some of the previous A-series phones were. But at the end of the day, I'm okay with sacrificing a little bit of battery to be able to have that higher refresh rate, but I am interested to see how that 4,300 milliamps plays out. And with the internal, here you are getting so far the latest and greatest when it comes to the processor you're getting the tensor g2 chip which is exactly what actually came in the pixel 7 and 7 pro so with that being said even though this is technically an inferior phone we should be getting the same performance out of this device, even though this is $499 versus what those were when those were released. And it also comes with 128 gigs of storage and it does come with eight gigs of RAM as well. So once again, even though it's an entry level phone from Google, uh, you are getting some flagship stuff out of it for sure. Also with this setup, we are getting dual speakers here at the front and bottom here. So with that, let's go ahead and check out my latest video and let's see how loud these actually are. Samsung Galaxy S23. This bad boy is gonna set you back around 50 bucks, so I'll link it down in the description if you're interested. In okay, so actually not that bad at all. Uh, actually puts my Pixel 6 speakers to shame, but at the end of the day, if you're just listening to them like normal people and not trying to blare it and kind of maxing the speakers out, 
uh, then you should be very happy with the speaker setup with these. And then what I'll end with is that we are getting IP67 water resistance. So that is plenty for a phone. So it's gonna be able to take the spills and the dirt and all that. Uh, one thing I have noticed though, is that the phone is getting pretty hot. Now, granted, most of my phones have gotten hot, even flagship devices, as it's setting up and getting all the apps downloaded from you know, Google's backup. But at the end of the day, it is getting a little warm and that's just something to point out. That's something I've seen in videos from other people. Uh, it is a plastic back as well, which is okay to me. Like I honestly, I wouldn't have known. Like if you'd have told me that this was glass back, uh, I would have probably guessed and fallen for that. But once you really start to look, obviously you can tell a little bit that it's probably not glass, but it is a plastic build, which in my opinion is okay, especially for an A series phone. And it's a little bit more durable too. It's not gonna just shatter when you drop it. So it's gonna be a little bit stronger. Uh, it does have Gorilla Glass 3 on the front as well. So not the latest and greatest, but once again, it's gonna be just fine. So there we have it guys. I definitely am looking forward to playing with this phone a lot more. It just feels so good in the hand and looks really good. I love Pixel phones. So I think I'm gonna probably enjoy this one as well, but uh, keep an eye out for some case reviews I'm gonna do from Spigen here in a little bit. So hit that like button if you like this video. If you loved it, please subscribe. Ring that notification bell for up-to-date content. So be safe, God bless, see you on the next one.